ideas. And to me, it seems like they're provoking these countries or it, it kind of looks like they're pushing for war. I mean, do you see the same thing where they're pushing for some type of war? Uh, what I see, Dave, is the Anglo-American financial edifice bowing up to constituents in the world that have been posing uh, a threat or slash alternative to the uh, uh, financial hegemony of the uh, U.S. dollar in trade settlement. The primary uh, adversaries of uh, America slash NATO has been uh, China slash Russia, who, uh, in my view, are sick of having the American fraudulent uh, dollar settlement hegemony shoved down their throats. This is this has led them to erect parallel structures to the old institutions like the World Bank and the IMF that prop up U.S. dollar hegemony, and uh, and this has been this has been accomplished by the creation of the uh, of, of of different structures that are that are the comparable in 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 the land of the BRICS countries to the IMF and the World Bank. So in in retaliation for this. We've seen a lot of thumping of chest and a lot of posturing and uh, uh, a lot of mucky muck being uh, imposed by the occupied uh, United States government and, uh, and, 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 their, and their enforcement arm, which is the U.S. military. That's the way I see it from a, from a very high level. Now, from you just said something about them setting up their own payment systems, their own system separate and apart from the dollar do you think they realize that the dollar is at its end game and this is why they're doing this at this point you know in in a in a very short terse answer yes uh that's that's exactly what's going on and you know the reason the reason why this is the way it is is because the uh, I want to say the uh, stewardship that America has shown as the conservator of the world's reserve currency has been so extremely poor, so extremely corruptly managed, and so so disingenuously uh, uh, applied and and, uh, and maintained that the rest of the world has had little choice but to uh, make preparations to. Uh, effectively abandon the dollar in trade settlement, and to me, it's an inevitable outcome that we will all live to see, one way or another. And whether whether this means we end up in a global uh, in a global war, I think is is largely going to be up to the sociopaths who are who are running the Western uh, military industrial complex, because in my view, the rest of the world isn't going to sit back idly and be cowed and bullied. By uh, by a group of uh, fraudulent criminal sociopaths that have occupied the uh, vestiges of power in the Western world. Yeah, I mean, I just want to take this, and we're talking about the dollar collapsing and stuff, and we're seeing the stock market right now. I mean, we're seeing fluctuations. We're seeing it drop one day, get pumped up the next day. And we're continually seeing this. I mean, yesterday we saw it drop. Today we're seeing that it's okay. They're blaming everything on China. I mean, what do you make of all this? Uh, why is this all happening right now? Well, you know, Dave, uh, just to back up for a mm -hmm. second before we address the real question, uh, we're, we're seeing uh, a lot of finger pointing. Uh, like, like we're seeing Russia be blamed for what's going on in the Ukraine. We're seeing, you know, a, a host of different actors. Uh, strangely enough, vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis, uh, uh, Syria and, and, and destabilization there, and uh, uh, Libya and destabilization there, and uh, uh, you know, uh, Egypt and destabilization there, and all, all of all of these uh, destabilizations that I just just mentioned. These these have all been uh, ar ar architected or engineered by uh, basically uh, NGOs, uh, uh, American based. Whether it's uh, Soros, they've they've been they've been funded and armed by uh, by the U.S. military. Um, uh, the whole the whole Al Qaeda, ISIS, 
the extremist uh, uh, part of the, uh, uh, you know, of the Muslim uh, entity is, is a creation of U.S. intelligence to begin with. Um, so, yeah, they like to they like to point fingers at everyone but themselves. Mm -hmm. if, if, and I mean, if you want to just go back and revisit the words of Victoria Newland as the Under Secretary of State uh, regarding. Uh, um, developments in, in the Ukraine, uh, where Victoria Newland uh, uh, had to say to uh, uh, one of her co-workers in, in the Ukrainian realm uh, that uh, proposed American uh, activities in the Ukraine might, might not be received very well in Europe, and her, and her response, uh, which was recorded by Russian intelligence, her response was, F Europe. So, I mean, America has been acting on the world stage of F everybody. And, you know, this this is not conducive to good global uh, or international relations. And this, in my view anyway, in my humble opinion, uh, is, is symptomatic of a failed foreign policy, of a failed state, of of uh, of of something that's so utterly backwards and wrong and criminal that you know I'm going to repeat what I said earlier. Mm -hmm. They've left the rest of the world with little chance but to galvanize and stand against it, and that's exactly what we're see we're seeing happen. And uh, I think we you 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 had a you had a more direct point in this line of, of reasoning, which seems to escape me right now because I, I'm sorry I got got sidetracked on a bit of a diatribe there and I didn't mean to. Um, could you refresh my memory? Um, I'm just talking about the stock market and how we're seeing the fluctuations right now. Oh yes, um, and yeah, Dave, the stock market. What we're what we're witnessing, what we have a rinkside seat to in in the stock market is the is is the uh, varying degrees of success and failure of the president's working group on financial markets uh, also known as the plunge protection team you see the real reason we're seeing all this is that the stock markets are in bubble valuations they've been in bubble valuations for a very long time the only reason that they're at these valuations is because interest rates were engineered and and forced to zero and uh, and and multiple rounds of uh, declared and undeclared uh, quantitative easing, which is also known as money printing. So we've seen we've seen the uh, uh, currency of the realm, namely the U.S. dollar, debased like no other currency in the world has ever been debased. Other other prominent. Uh, uh, Economic blocks around the world, whether it's the euro, the yen, uh, have have joined in force and acted in a coordinated fashion to uh, uh, jump onto the QE train along with uh, the uh, people that have occupied the U.S. financial uh, entity, uh, the Treasury, and uh, it's a race. You know, it's it's sometime in economics. Uh, when there's when there's competitive devaluations of currencies, they call it a race to the bottom, and it's basically it's a it's a competition to see who can devalue their currency the most. And you know while this has been happening, uh, uh, you know there's there's one side of the coin that says if you print enough money, the stock market will go up no matter what, um, and then there's another side of the a uh, coin that says if you debase the currency enough, uh, you, you you effectively choke off economic activity, uh, which is very negative for stocks. But the the one thing that stands or or historically has stood through all of this kind of kind of mayhem, in all cases in economic history, has been that when this these type of conditions have presented themselves in the past precious metals have stood tall and precious metals have been prevented from standing tall in our current environment because we have we have insane amounts of naked shorting of 
precious metals through exchanges like the LBMA and the COMEX in New York, where the uh, amount of silver being sold in paper form exceeds the amount of silver that's mined on the planet in a year. Uh, for instance, in silver, such a condition where more than a year's mine supply has been sold in paper form, uh, uh, there's no commodity on the planet where this has ever occurred before or that where this would be tolerated because in commodities uh, uh, trading there, there there is commodities law and commodities law states that this sort of activity should never and could never occur but the fact that we have American regulators turning a blind eye to these abusive uh, practices tells us that the uh, uh, regulatory uh, arm is complicit in US government action to effectively kill the canary or squelch the voice of the canary in the coal mine because in an economic sense Dave mm -hmm. it's it's historically been a, a rapidly rising price of physical precious metal that has been the sound that the currency is being seriously debased and defiled and uh, the powers that be, these sociopaths, these Keynesian-minded uh, 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 world reshapers, uh, have 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 decided in their wisdom, uh, mis misguided misguided wisdom, uh, as they cloak themselves in the flag and wrap themselves in the uh, uh, false paradigm of national security, that that they have uh, seen fit to overturn the basic tenets of uh, economics and to cast them to the wind much much in the same way they've cast your constitution aside in favor of a police state uh, while usurping the uh, liberties and the constitutional rights of uh, of americans right we, we discussed this before the interview where the u.s really is pushing the police state out to pretty much all the countries, um, and we can see that other countries are starting to take on the same thing where they're putting soldiers on the street, they're removing the rights, they're having searches, and they're doing all of this right now all at the same time. I mean, in Australia, in France, in Canada, Belgium, UK, we see it happening all over the place, and we see that they're really getting ready it looks to me like they're getting ready to control what is coming i mean do you see I, the same thing yeah well dave uh, as i mentioned to you, to you before mm -hmm. we started recording i went to i went to the my second major league baseball game of the year last night uh my first one was early in the spring and uh, uh when uh, boston was in town to play toronto and I went to that game, and I thoroughly enjoyed the experience. But between the game I went to in the spring and the game I went to last night, the American League has instituted new security procedures at all Major League Baseball parks. And uh, I, I was subject to being in a lineup uh, like cattle uh, for over a half hour uh, to, to go through security where you had to empty your pockets uh, 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 and have someone rifle through, you know, for the women, people rifling through your handbags uh, and, and emptying your pockets, walk through a metal detector. And uh, uh, all I can tell you is my, 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 view of, uh, my view of what was transpiring was ludicrous. It's ineffective. Uh, any, anybody who would have any... Uh, intentions of causing harm at an event like that this this would have absolutely in my view little to zero effect in in stopping them and what it really is is it's teaching us all to uh, uh, you know uh, to be s submissive and it, it's basically slave training or prisoner training in my view and these, you know, metal detectors at, at, at sporting events, in my in in my view, and this sort of this sort of uh, 
this this has all been dictated by uh, Homeland Security. Um, uh, Homeland Security, in my view, is 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 a is anything but Homeland Security. It's Homeland oppression. And what I can say after after seeing this last night, uh, last night I attended the the last American League baseball game I will ever attend. And um, I'm left with the conclusion that America's biggest export now is the police state. America exports police state to the rest of the world. That's what America stands for. That's what America is now known for in international markets. And that's why the world is now galvanizing against the people who have occupied America and taken over its leadership in a stealth coup. No, I, and I completely agree with you. I mean, we see all this happening right now, and we see what's happening in the markets. We see what's happening in the economy. A lot of people are talking about the Shemitah, the seven-year cycle. I mean, they're saying this September right now we're going to see something happen. We're not sure, um, or maybe it'll lead into uh, uh, later in the fall or the winter. We're hearing from Jim Sinclair. Um, he's talking, yes, this is going to happen I mean, what's your view on this? Do you think that this crash is about ready to explode? Well, what I see, Dave, is um, um, it, it's I've I've always found it difficult, and and I and I've tried to refrain from putting dates mm -hmm. on 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 uh, uh, traumatic events in the market. But what I can see is extremely dark clouds. I see dark clouds that, in in my experience, have produced uh, uh, very very violent thunderstorms, have produced tornadoes, ha ha has produced uh, a carnage, and the skies the skies in an economic sense keep getting darker, and to th to think that to think that something very very traumatic and dangerous could could come out of this. Is not a stretch anymore. I don't think it's fear porn anymore. And you know, it's it's uh, you know what we can see now visibly on the horizon is telling me that it's you know very likely a, a very smart time to think about taking shelter and uh, and and just and just what shelter entails uh, in this day and age it, from a financial perspective is you know maybe debatable between different people uh who who are thinking clearly about this uh but we're in for some we're in for some very very rough sailing here well, let me ask you i mean what exactly do you see coming like what can people expect to see or feel when this thing hits what i expect to see frankly is is a I, I do think that we have a hyperinflationary event in our in our future. I think that uh, people want to probably have some provisions, uh, whether whether it's some storable food, uh, they might want to have a have a means to protect all this. And I think that we're likely to see financial assets uh, ha have their value savaged. I think we're likely to see uh, uh, precious metals uh, break the shackles of the suppressive uh, uh, endeavors of the Anglo-American banking complex. I think we're likely to see those shackles broken in 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 the relatively possibly near future. Um, I think we're going to see exchanges like COMEX and LBMA in good time. We will see them fail. We will see them settle. We will see them settle position holders in cash. People who think they have exposure to real metal are gonna are gonna find out. I do believe in one fell swoop that they were they were just subject to part of the fraud, and they're gonna end up with a pile of fiat dollars that won't buy them a whole lot of anything. And I think the people that are gonna be left sitting as pretty as any from a financial perspective are going to be the people that actually have and can put their hands on physical precious metal. So I'm a huge believer in owning physical precious metal. And, and when I, and when I say owning precious metal, I think it's best that you have it where you can, you can literally put your hands on it 
in, in, in short time and, uh, and know it's yours. Because if you don't own it, if you, if you can't touch it, you don't own it. That's kind of sort of my view on that. So for the everyday person on the street, their way of life is going to completely change when this whole thing comes crumbling down. I, mean, I absolutely believe that to be the case. So those people who are out there working their nine to five jobs, you know, doing whatever they're doing every single day, this is kind of going to come to a screeching hole. I mean, we kind of saw a glimmer of it in 2008 and moving seven years now since that date i mean things have just gotten worse they really haven't gotten any better it's an illusion that everything's gotten better but when you talk about dark clouds you know a tornado thunder and thunderstorm i mean the everyday man or woman on the street they're not going to be doing the same thing they've been doing uh yesterday things are going to radically change for them well, I'll, look, I'll, t I'll even take it a little step further, uh, stepping it just for a minute, stepping outside the realm of, of financial uh, goings on. Mm -hmm. It sure seems to me that there are powers uh, within the United States that are trying to foment a, uh, uh, or induce um, a, a race war in the United States. And this, this, is, this is an extremely sad development. Uh, but I see, I see from the very highest levels in, in America right now, I see serious, serious attempts to race bait. I see serious attempts to sensationalize uh, 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 black on white, black on Mexican, Mexican on white, white on whoever. Uh, I, I, see, I see absolutely the, the uh, fingerprints and the footprints you see uh, of uh, attempts to balkanize the the public and the footprints you know are sasquatch size like they're hard to miss uh, unless 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 you are literally living in a vacuum and consuming all of your news from msnbc or cnn uh, uh you know the 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 entrails of of what i just said are unmistakably present and you know, this is this is another serious, serious development, because you see this this also explains why the uh, the police state apparatus has been erected around us because uh, and and why people are being trained to, you know, to 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 be good prisoners, because it sure seems that racially uh, America is being baited or positioned to have a very, very serious uh, uh, eruption on the on the racial front, and it's being it's being it's being absolutely uh, planned at the highest levels, and it's being instituted and and uh, 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 revved up by the media. The media are clearly complicit with 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 leadership. And uh, it's 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 really really an ugly situation. Yes, it is. I mean, we do see this, and every time something happens, it does seem like it's being pushed. And a lot of people talk about this being pushed where they can kind of maybe enact martial law, or you know, get rid of the Constitution or suspend the Constitution, I should say, officially, it, as opposed to just right. having done it anyway. Right. And it officially come out in the corporate media where the president can finally say, OK, we had to suspend the Constitution because what's going on here. And it does seem like they're trying to start these little protests, the riots, and they want it to spread across the country. Sure. Um, and the media has been fanning the flames. Yes. Yes, they have. Cheerleading. And it seems like they just can't get it started. I mean, they try. They try. They have the agent provocateurs. Uh, pushing it, and they try, and it just doesn't seem like they can get it off the ground. Um, but it doesn't mean they're not going to continually try because they 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 don't they won't stop. Uh, they would rather have uh, the the constitution completely suspended um, by announcing it. This way, they can do whatever they have to do, and we can just take a look at Ukraine and all the other countries and look at the people there under the rule of these puppet governments. I mean, they really don't have freedom there. Um, even though the U.S. was telling them they were fighting for democracy, they 
there is no democracy, there is no freedom or the rights of the people. And we definitely see that here in Canada now, in Australia, and the rest of the, the Eurozone. I mean, we see the same exact thing. They're preparing and getting ready. Yes, and you know what, Dave? Also, just to point out, because this, this, I know, I know when you start talking about these kind of things, mm-hmm. it can sound like a bashing exercise at times. Yes, and I also want to say that the the reason why these sociopaths haven't been successful to date is because there exists within the uh, the American people a a uh, a core of decency. A, 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 and, a, and a core of people who are still very, very um, uh, uh, committed to the Constitution, even though leadership has done their utmost to cast it aside. And average uh, rank and file Americans are good people. And good people are usually very, very loath to uh, uh, subject themselves or commit or, or, or be uh, taken down, down the drain by people who are uh, increasingly becoming very clearly, clearly uh, uh, the sociopaths, you know, th- that, that we're talking about. So, you know, uh, I guess to a point, you got to have faith in good people to, to hope that this can be uh, uh, diverted or stymied or, or rebuffed. And, uh, you know, that's kind of sort of what I'm hoping for. And that's kind of sort of what I'm what I'm betting on, because you know what, uh, uh, free people uh, are hard to uh, are really hard to take down. I agree with you. Listen, Rob, thank the uh, uh, Syria and, and and destabilization there, and uh, uh, Libya and destabilization there, and uh, uh, you know uh, Egypt and destabilization there, and all all of all of these. Uh, destabilizations that I just just mentioned, these these have all been uh, ar- ar- architected or engineered by uh, basically uh, NGOs, uh, uh, American based. Whether it's uh, Soros, they've they've been they've been funded and armed by uh, by the U.S. military. Um, uh, the whole the whole Al Qaeda, ISIS, the extremist. Uh, 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 part of the, uh, uh, you know, of the Muslim uh, entity is, is a creation of U.S. intelligence to begin with. Um, so, yeah, they like to they like to point fingers at everyone but themselves. Mm-hmm. If, if, and I mean, if you want to just go back and revisit the words of Victoria Newland as the Under Secretary of State uh, regarding uh, um, developments in in the Ukraine. Uh, where Victoria Newland uh, uh, had to say to uh, uh, one of her co-workers in, in the Ukrainian realm uh, that uh, proposed American uh, activities in the Ukraine might might not be received very well in Europe, and her and her response, uh, which was recorded by Russian intelligence, her response was "F Europe." So, I mean. America has been acting on the world stage of F everybody. And, you know, this, this is not conducive to good global uh, or international relations. And this, in my view anyway, in my humble opinion, uh, is, is symptomatic of a failed foreign policy, of a failed state. Uh, yes. Uh, that's that's exactly what's going on, and you know the reason the reason why this is the way it is is because the uh, I want to say the uh, stewardship that America has shown as the conservator of the world's reserve currency has been so extremely poor, so extremely corruptly managed, and so so disingenuously uh, applied and and, uh, and maintained that the rest of the world has had little choice but to uh, make preparations to uh, effectively abandon the dollar in trade settlement. And to me, it's an inevitable outcome that we will all live to see one way or another. And whether, whether this means we end up in a global, uh, in a global war 
I think is is largely going to be up to the sociopaths who are who are running the Western uh, military industrial complex, because in my view, the rest of the world isn't going to sit back idly and be cowed and bullied by uh, by a group of uh, fraudulent criminal sociopaths that have occupied the uh, vestiges of power in the Western world. Yeah, I mean, I just want to take this and we're talking about the dollar collapsing and stuff and we're seeing the stock market right now. I mean, we're seeing fluctuations. We're seeing it drop one day, get pumped up the next day. And we're continually seeing this. I mean, yesterday we saw a drop. Today we're seeing that it's okay. They're blaming everything on China. I mean, what do you make of all this? Uh, why is this all happening right now? Well, you know, Dave, to, uh, just to back up for a mm -hmm. second before we address the real question, uh, we're, we're seeing uh, a lot of finger pointing, uh, like like we're seeing Russia be blamed for what's going on in the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. We're seeing, you know, a, a host of different actors, uh, strangely enough, uh, uh, vis-a-vis. And to me, it seems like they're provoking these countries or it it kind of looks like they're pushing for war. I mean, do you see the same thing where they're pushing for some type of war? Uh, what I see, Dave, is the Anglo-American financial edifice bowing up to constituents in the world that have been posing uh, a, a threat or slash alternative to the uh, uh, financial hegemony of the uh, U.S. dollar in trade settlement. The primary uh, adversaries of uh, America slash NATO has been uh, China slash Russia, who, uh, in my view, are sick of having the American fraudulent uh, dollar settlement hegemony shoved down their throats. This is this has led them to erect parallel structures to the old institutions like the World Bank and the IMF that prop up US dollar hegemony and uh, and this has been this has been accomplished by the creation of the uh, of 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 different structures that are that are the comparable in 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 the land of the BRICS countries to the IMF and the World Bank so in in retaliation for this we've seen a lot of thumping of chest and a lot of posturing and uh, uh, a lot of mucky muck being uh, imposed by the occupied uh, United States government and, uh, and 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 their and their enforcement arm, which is the U.S. military. That's the way I see it from a from a very high level. Now, from you just said something about them setting up their own payment systems, their own systems separate and apart from the dollar. Do you think they realize that the dollar is at its end game, and this is why they're doing this at this point. You know, in in a in a very short, terse answer of of uh, of of something that's so utterly backwards and wrong and criminal that you know I'm going to repeat what I said earlier. Mm -hmm. They've left the rest of the world with little chance but to galvanize and stand against it, and that's exactly what we're see we're seeing happen. And. Uh, I think we you 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 had a you had a more direct point in this line of, of reasoning, which seems to escape me right now because I I'm sorry I got got sidetracked on a bit of a diatribe there and I didn't mean to. Um, could you refresh my memory? Um, I'm just talking about the stock market and how we're seeing the fluctuations right now. Oh yes, um, and yeah, Dave. The stock market. What we're what we're witnessing. What we have a rinkside seat to in in the stock market. Is the is is the uh, varying degrees of success and failure of the president's working group on financial markets, uh, also known as the Plunge Protection Team. You see, the real reason we're seeing all this is that the stock markets are in bubble valuations. They've been in bubble valuations for a very long time. The only reason that they're at these valuations is because interest rates were engineered and and forced to zero. And, uh, and and multiple rounds of uh, declared and undeclared uh, quantitative easing, which is also known as money printing. So we've seen we've seen the uh, uh, currency 
of the realm, namely the US dollar, debased like no other currency in the world has ever been debased. Other, other prominent uh, 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 economic blocks around the world, whether it's the euro, the yen, uh, have, have joined in force and acted in a coordinated fashion to uh, uh, jump onto the QE train along with uh, the uh, people that have occupied the U.S. financial uh, entity, uh, the Treasury. And uh, it's a race... You know, it's it's sometime in economics uh, when there's when there's competitive devaluations of currencies, they call it a race to the bottom, and it's basically it's a it's a competition to see who can devalue their currency the most. And you know, while this has been happening, uh, uh, you know, there's there's one side of the coin that says if you print enough money, the stock market will go up no matter what. Um, and then there's another side of the uh, coin that says if you debase the currency enough, uh, you, you, you effectively choke off economic activity, uh, which is very negative for stocks. But the, the one thing that stands or, or historically has stood through all of this kind of, kind of mayhem in all cases in economic history has been that when this these type of conditions have presented themselves in the past, precious metals have stood tall. And precious metals have been prevented from standing tall in our current environment because we have we have insane amounts of naked shorting of precious metals through exchanges like the LBMA and the COMEX in New York, where the uh, amount of silver being sold in paper form exceeds the amount of silver that's mined on the planet in a year. Uh, for instance, in silver, such a condition where more than a year's mine supply has been sold in paper form, uh, uh, there's no commodity on the planet where this has ever occurred before or that where this would be tolerated because in commodities uh, uh, trading there, there there is commodities law and commodities law states that this sort of activity should never and could never occur but 